Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widja here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And today I'm giving you some Hauser gameplay. So recently I dropped a video of my first impressions of playing the Ethiopians, but I decided to give you some actual gameplay footage of the Hauser. Now I've got to say, I have been struggling and trawling through lots of stuff on the internet, trying to find a good solid sort of opening for the Hauser that's beginner friendly, easy to learn, and will dominate on the ladder. Now, of course, before we start, uh, if you're watching this maybe a few weeks uh, in the past, there may be a potential patch that may nerf a couple of things for Hauser. They still are a very, very strong sieve, and they are considered as a lame sieve at the moment, but I don't care about labels right now. We all know the lamest sieve was the Swedes, and they always will be. But let's have a look at this. So I'm against a Japanese opponent here, Lord of Anxiety. Interesting. It's not Give You Anxiety's cousin or anything like that. This is Lord of Anxiety. And I'm going to show you uh, this sort of build order that I did here. And I'm going to sort of stop it and pause it here and there. And we're going to, um, we're going to go for it. Okay, guys. Right. Let's go for this. So Lord of Anxiety, we'll take the view lock off and we'll go straight over to me here. So before we start, we do the pretty much the classic opening for Hauser. Now, some people will go ahead and sell the two cattle. When you have 200 wood, you sell the first. When you have 150 wood at the bottom left here, you sell the second. And what you do is you'll build an early trade post, you'll build a house, and then you will build, you will get the hunting dogs upgrade at your granary. Okay. However, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be selling one cattle. And I've got to sort of say thank you to Yukati. So I was stalking Yukati's like past broadcasts on Twitch. And I just really wanted to see a good solid opening because he sort of plays the Inca very similar to me. And I like his style of play. It's sort of quite a solid opening, bit of eco behind, not too aggressive. And sort of going in with that timing attack when you have enough units. So that's why I, um, I sort of watched him, studied him a little bit. And I'm going to be showing you what I go for. So just going to have a look at the deck. We'll see the deck in a second when I select it. All you want to do is obviously build a granary. Uh, preferably have two or three people building that because it takes a while to build. And then you just want to get your get your bison. Uh, get your hunted uh, huntables wherever they are. And make sure it's really got to be within this zone here. Because that zone, I believe, gives you like 10% increase on your gathering of course use your explorer go around get treasures any good ones like uh food to age up quicker will be great xp as well is really really good so now we have our first home city shipment ready to go and i'm going to show you guys the first shipment that's going to be coming out here and we are going to build a hut so what i did here is i went ahead and i sold so you can do this actually relatively early right i sold um one cattle there. As long as it's above 150 wood, it's fine because we want to use 100 wood to build a house and we want to use the other 50 to get the village dogs. So that's what you want to do. And I suggest you do that relatively early. As soon as it gets just here, just above your minimap, as soon as that gets to 150, go ahead and click that button. And then the available thing will be down here, the button down here, one of these two. Click it, you get 150 wood and you're good to go. So... That's what I'm doing. Pretty standard. We've got 70 food. That's really going to help us with the age up. That's going to shave off a good sort of five seconds at least. And you can see here the first card I'm going for is the three villager, which will give you obviously a cattle with it as well. And this is my deck right here. So hopefully you guys can see that. If you want to maybe pause the video, I know that a lot of it's blanked out. But this is my deck. And yeah, we go for the three villagers first. And then when we get into age two, we're going to go for the 700 wood and then we're going to go for the raiders. Now, I know some people do go raiders first. I like the 700 wood because it gives you that infrastructure to be able to start building your war huts and some extra houses. And also it allows you to have that wood to start training Falani archers, which you're going to need as well. So I like that word, Falani. Falani. I like it. I like it. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. I mean, I, I've just played three games on the ladder and I, I was, before I saw this sort of build that UKT was doing, um, I did sort of try and play them in a slightly different way, a, a lot more rushy. I know they're very good as a rush sieve, um, but this isn't so much of a rush uh, that we do here. It's more of like an initial raid 
to distract the enemy, try and disrupt their economy. And whilst we're doing that, we're just starting to mass our units up and then there's going to be a timing attack in age two and what our aim really is is to try and finish them in age two you know we don't really want it to go on into age three i mean it can do but this sort of style play here is to try and you kind of want to just finish them in age two and that's what i like the most that's my kind of play style i like playing in age two quite a lot with sieves like the inca for example they've got a great um sort of roster of units very very similar so we are aging up. Now, what did we pick? We picked the Moroccans. Now, there's tons of different options for you, and there isn't any real sort of one that you should go for. But I go for the Moroccans because you get that mosque. The mosque will give you XP trickle, which is great. And I just like it. It gives you that XP trickle. It gives you 400 XP as well, and that's really crucial because you're going to want uh, a lot of shipments because you're going to want to be able to get that tempo going. You want to be able to get a lot of units quickly and extra shipments for your resources will definitely help. So what we're doing here is we're moving pretty much everyone over to wood. There's one more hunting, but you can either have one or two, maybe herding if you if you need to herd and move to like a new area. You could use two sieves to move and build a granary and start getting your next hunt and sort of preparing for that. But I'm chopping here because I want to chop for 300 wood. Now, I want to get this to 300 because I want 200 for my war hut. And you can see here, I just sold some stuff. So I'm just going to talk about that because there's a lot of things that happen very quickly. So I'm just going to run through this quickly here. So you want to chop 300 wood. Now, the reason is, is because you want to get an upgrade in the marketplace, which is, sorry, in the granary, which is your secondary food resource gather rate upgrade. Now that, I believe, costs 100 wood and 100 gold. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough there to be able to get your second upgrade so you have that strong eco behind you and also what you're going to want to do the minute you move over to wood is get the hardened iron axes which i believe is 50 food so just make sure you've got a little bit of food left over which you normally will do because your macro won't be perfect especially like if you're around my level and below your macro won't be perfect you will have that extra food and i suggest you you go ahead and get the hardened iron axes which is a crucial one to go for and then what I did here is I sold two cattle. So I sold for, I believe, I sold for wood and I sold for gold. Now, the reason that I did that is because I want to now use my explorer in transition from age one to age two. I want him to build a TP and then straight after that build a university. Now, it all depends on the map you're on. But what I suggest is if you've got a native TP near you is to go for the training post here and then put a university in the middle. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, but the university will give you an enhanced trickle rate of XP uh, and influence if it's next to a palace, TP or TC, right? So the best thing that you can do is get a university down that has the range to cover your trading post here if you have a native one. Now, this one's a really good native TP because it gives you the Courier de Bois uh, unit. So if you wanted to uh, and play a little bit more greedy, you could use your influence and you could go ahead and get some Courier de Bois out, which is the French settler unit that has a high gather rate. So I know that I've, I've obviously spoken a lot there. So, you know, feel free to pause it, go back and go through it. But there's a, there's a little bit happening there, quite a bit happening there that you just need to be aware of. So just make sure you're chopping for that 300 wood. You get your university down, you get your TP first, university down. And then uh, you've got this shipment here ready to go. We're going to wait, we're going to hold off. And we have our Japanese player here going for a shrine boom. I thought that was the Tory Gates when I saw it, but I, I for some reason thought it was the Tory Gates. But he's going for a classic good old shrine boom. Remember, the J Japan have been nerfed slightly. Their shrine HP has gone down and there's certain upgrades as well that's happened. Right, okay, so you saw there's a bit of shuffling around there, a bit of movement. So we've aged up with the Moroccans, which means we're going to get that um, mosque wagon here. That we're going to be able to put down and also we get 400 xp crates make sure you get those as soon as possible and you can see here that i'm just moving out and i'm building a granary so i can secure this hunt this hunt kind of goes a little bit bad i heard them really badly so just try and do better than me there so there we go that's what's happening university is going up and we can see we have a shipment available and i think i go for the 700 wood we shall see yeah there you go that's the uh, that's the secondary farm upgrade the snares so you kind of want to get that make sure you get the snares 
and I'm training villagers. Always make sure to train villagers. I am extremely bad for it. Everyone knows I am the worst villager creator in RTS games. I just don't know why I keep forgetting to make villagers, but that's just me. Okay, so university is built. So the university now is getting two influence. You can see there, can you see? It's actually getting the bonuses there, it shows you. So you're getting the TP and the TC. Is the TC actually in range? Ooh, is that actually in range? Ooh, just built it just, just right there. So just want to make sure, always make sure that that zone is within your TC and your TP if you can. Also, I believe the palace will give you an increase as well. So if you wanted to play more defensive, you could go ahead and build a palace right here. But we don't do this in this game, but that is an option. There's lots of options with this sieve. And we have two shipments available now because of all those XP crates. We're now building the war camp that we said with the 200 wood. And snares improvement has now gone in. And now we're getting our second shipment is going to be these six raiders. Now what I suggest that you do with these raiders is you do not lose them. You want to treat these raiders as if you're semi FFing and you're going for five hussar. Or if you're going step riders as China. You, you, you don't want to lose these cav. They're, they're quite light cavalry. They're, they are susceptible to TC fire and, and stuff like that very easily. So you just want to annoy your enemy. Or, and especially if you're against auto gathering sieves like Inca, Swedes and Japan. What you want to do is just annoy them as much as possible. Take down their torps. Take down their shrines. Just try and distract them as much as possible. And focus on your eco. So this is kind of an interesting stage here. We've got the 700 wood that, we, that I need to go and collect. I'm building a hut. So this is super important, guys. I, I need to make sure that I'm better at this. Make sure you're not pop caps. Always look at your population because trust me, we're going to be ramping up to 60, 70 pop very soon. And you're going to need to build a good ton of houses. So you're going to have to make sure you've got that wood in there. And you're going to have to make sure that you're constantly building them so that, so that you have enough. Obviously, don't overbuild. Just keep an eye on your pop. You don't want to get pop capped because it really slows down your uh, your flow. So six raiders on the way. And I did go for four villagers here. So that's very optional. Very, very optional. You could go for these seven Fulani archers. And I don't know whether or not I, I cancel this. I can't remember. But I you could go seven Fulani archers, definitely, if you wanted to have more, more aggression. If you didn't, then go for four vils. Um... But yeah, that's that's what I'm going. Okay, so ah, okay, so there's something here that I didn't really see uh, that what was going on. But you can see that a watchtower builder has just popped up out of nowhere. Okay, so your watchtower, if you don't know the house of that well, they're another type of unit or sorry building that will produce military units for you, different types of military units, and it acts as a watchtower as well. So like a sentry tower, it will shoot and stuff like that. So it's good if you want to play defensive. So. I think this, I'm not too sure if this is just available for the Moroccans because I'm very new to Hauser, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But there should be an option in your university for five, no, is it 300 influence? I can't remember now. I can't go back, unfortunately. It's either 300 or 500 influence. I, I, I think it's, I think it's 300. So for 300 influence, you can generate yourself a watchtower builder, okay? And this... You kind of want to put with your university and your war hut wherever you plan on putting it. But I would put it quite defensively. There are other styles of play, of course, where you can play more aggressive. You can secure the TP further up. You can get your university further up here. You can maybe build a palace as well if you want to. There's lots of things you can do. But this is what I'm showing you guys. Okay, so the raiders have come out now. See, raiders, quite low HP. They are. They actually have quite a bit of range resist, actually. It's actually quite... Um, quite good actually they are heavy cav okay i thought they were light cav so they are heavy cav they're just sort of low hp heavy cav and um, they are very good if we look hover over the attack here they have no bonuses oh they're sorry they do sorry i'm being stupid they have bonuses against infantry so i'm gonna see here that I do, I, I get, I train some Fulani archers. So that's what you want to do. The minute you get your war camp up, you want to start training Fulani archers. And the reason is, is, the reason it's so good is because that 700 wood that you got is going to help you get those Fulani archers. And what I recommend that you do is you sort of change your macro once you've got your 700 wood in. So once you've got your 700 wood, you can go ahead, spend it on some houses, start getting Fulani archers. And then I recommend that you put the majority of your veils over to food. 
because you're going to need that for veal production. You're going to need it for obviously your units. And then I suggest moving some yes. over to gold. Now, the reason is, is because we are starting to build the watchtower here. Now, the watchtower, because it's come from the university, that button there, it's given us, it's unlocked us a Corsair Marksman, which is a very, very powerful skirmish unit for age two. And we want to start making some of those because they're really, really fun and really, really cool. And um, yeah, we'll see that. We'll see that very shortly. So you can see here that he's obviously pushed out with a few Ashigaru here. Maybe trying to maybe take down a TP, but I've got the native TP. You can see that my four veals now has come out. I've got the Sanga cattle. I'm going to make sure to always put your cattle over to your livestock market. I've got the placer mine upgrade there. So always good to get your upgrades in. You can see here, look, I'm pop, I'm pop capped. See? Always remember to build houses. Maybe I built too many there. Maybe just two I should have built, but make sure that you're not pop capped like me. I've got four archers coming out. See, I missed an archer there. Now here we go. Here we go. This is a little bit of a push here. So we, we're just sort of poking in, seeing what they've got, and seeing if we can uh, use the raiders here to to our the best of our ability here. Okay, so what I've done, I'm just going to um, talk about what I'm training up here. So here's the Corsair Marksman. They're coming out of the Watchtower. Now the reason that I've shot up in gold is because I've sold another cattle for some gold. Okay. So I just need a little bump in gold. And that, that's what I suggest you guys do with this sieve. You know, every shipment, because we have so much XP at the start of age two, we're going to be getting a lot of XP coming in. It's going to be rolling in, okay? You're going to be getting um, some XP, I believe, from... Actually, I switched that, didn't I? But you should be getting some XP from your TP. You'll be getting some XP from your mosque. You'll be getting XP from creating units, attacking units, and building houses and everything like that. So... You're going to be getting a lot of cattle every time you do a shipment. You're going to be getting a cattle. So I really encourage you guys to make sure to sell cattle when you're in a pinch, when you need to quickly get those resources, when your macro isn't too there, or if you need a little bit extra, I recommend that you sell the cattle for that purpose. Now, what I don't recommend is you start selling cattle when it's extremely low like this. Like so very, the livestock value is very, very low. I would suggest anything 200 and above, ideally. But obviously, if you have to, you have to. But I'd recommend anything 200 or above, I'd start selling if you if you do need it. Okay, let's carry on. So you can see here, the Fulani Archer's picking off the Explorer. That's more XP for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start sieging here. Okay, the Raiders have a decent siege. 26 siege, that's pretty nice. And um, what I suggest you, you do now is you start making Raiders. So what we did is we, we went ahead and got some Fulani Archers. Uh, two batches of Falani out of the war hut and now I'm switching over to the Raider and the Corsair Marksman. So we're sort of changing the composition just slightly here and this makes your macro really easy because you can pretty much start macroing for food and gold for all of your army needs. Okay, So we do see quite a significant amount coming out. They've actually gone for the Shinobi Nomono which is the um, which are the ninjas essentially that are really good at infantry. So, they're pretty good at infantry and stuff like that. So, we need to be very careful here. He's obviously gone for the Japanese consulate. Yep. So, here, you know, I can see I'm pushing back here. So, so just make sure that you you fight on your terms. You know, if, the, if they're pushing out, just come back to your base. You know, I've got another thing in queue here from the home city that I'm going to mention just now. Wait for everything to come through and then decide to take your fight. So this is kind of important. I suggest you go for the um, Sahalian Kingdoms card once you start to make some of these Corsair Marksmen. Because these Corsair Marksmen are called RA Mercenary Unit. They're a mercenary type unit. Or they're, they're an outlaw, sorry. They're an outlaw. It's kind of difficult. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think everything that you get from the Watchtower is covered by this Salar uh, Sahalian Kingdoms card. And that is quite significant. Look, 15% hit points, 15% damage. So only go for this card if you're planning on making more of the Corsair Marksman or any of... I think you can make Desert Warriors from the Watchtower as well. Just bear that in mind. You don't have to get it. You you know, I could have maybe gone... I, actually, yeah, look, I could have gone for, um, for some Desert Warriors. And that would allow Outlaws to move and train faster. Look at that. Build time, 30%. That probably would have been a lot better, actually. I should have probably gone for the... Yuan Dandy there. 
But instead, I've gone for the Sahali Sahalian kingdoms. So you can switch it up. You can switch it up. Okay. So you can see here, my hunts aren't doing the best here. They are coming back here, though. I managed to herd them back, which is nice. And now we're starting to move out. You can see Pop Pop is already at 70. We're at 56 out of 70 here. We have another shipment, another cattle. And that upgrade has now come in. And you can see that the uh, marksman has now increased. And I'm getting more raiders. So look at all these raiders. And they, they do, they train really fast. They're really fast training time. And they have high siege, very high range resist. Very nice unit. And we've massed a lot of them up now. Don't be afraid, just because the enemy's got a lot of Ashigaru, don't be afraid of putting some Cav in there. Cav can be really good at sort of um, snaring the enemy and forcing them to fight. You know, if you've got skirms like I've got here and you don't want the enemy to retreat, get some Cav in there. It'll really slow them down. It'll put them in a pinch and it'll force them to fight if you want them to fight. So just obviously don't go too crazy and, and lose all your raiders, but just bear that in mind. So we do see a stable coming out now for Lord of Anxiety. And I'm just walking around. I'm just traveling around here. See if I can find any shrines. Uh, I'm 2k score up. So I'm, I'm feeling a, a little bit confident about this. I'm not too sure the size of his army. My next card is going to be the Falani Archers. And I'm getting more Falani Archers. Okay. So once again, pop caps. Look, we're 70 for 70 now. Really got to... Really got to bear that in mind, guys. Honestly, I, I still struggle with this, with, with the population. And you can see here, I'm making more Corsair Marksmen, Falani Archers. It's entirely up to you. What I probably should have done there is made some Corsair Marksmen instead. Seven Falani Archers have come out now. I mean, look at this mass. Look, for 10 minutes, we've got, you know, we've got a pretty decent, we've got, you know, we've got 16 Raiders. We've got 20 Falani Archers, 10 Marksmen. We've got a lot of troops here. At 10 minutes now look what you could do there's loads of things you could do here guys look look how much gold i'm getting in okay what i could do is i could start you can always eat these cattle right you don't have to sell them if you want them for food you can go ahead and kill them and you can you can eat them if you need a little bit of food very quickly but i mean you could do anything here you you could go you could age up to age three right now you know you've got a decent force we could push out and then if it's successful we could then age off the back of that depending on how much damage we do, you know? So there's lots of options you can do, but I, I like to try and see if I can fight in age two, see if I can finish it in age two. I saw that he was going age two as well. He's committed a lot to, to his uh, units here. He hasn't really got a lot uh, resource wise here. So he's definitely not looking to age up. And we do see some Nagi Nata riders, which is kind of crazy. I'm seeing Nagis more and more in age two. Normally you see them in like age three. But you can see here that I'm going to get caught out a little bit, but luckily I see it. I only lose one raider there, and I make sure just to see if I can quickly get in this shrine before uh, losing another one. And I do, unfortunately, lose... Ooh. Oh, I lose three raiders there. So I'm not too sure if that was worth it, but we got it. And we can just... We've got that mobility. We can just go ahead and go for the... Uh, and go for uh, the shrine here. This is kind of crazy. This is a very interesting situation. Look at this. So we've got like a... Maybe a raiding party. I'm not entirely sure. We've got a group of troops over here for Lord of Anxiety. And obviously this group is coming back. So I know they're coming back. I know they're walking back. So I saw them and I thought, you know what? I'll go ahead nice and I'll idea. try and cut them off with my skirms. So we'll see how this goes down. By the way, look at my resources. A lot of food, a lot of gold. Keep making Corsair Marksmen. You can see my next card now is Defodio Tactics, which is a buff to the Fulani. So that's very, very good. You could also have gone something like the... Um, look, I've got a lot of influence here. So I could have actually gone for the uh, Rumfers Riders. That would have been a good card because that gets the Lefidi Knights. The Lefidi Knights are insane. They have double dual resistance. They have dual resistance to melee and ranged. So really, if you are stuck and you need Cav that are quite powerful, that is your card right there. And of course, this card's very good as well that I could have gone for which is the Desert Warrior, and it gives your outlaws more of a buff as well, more speed, and, and they can train quicker. Lots of options, lots of options. But I went for the Fodio Tactics because I do have 20 archers, so I thought I'd go for that. And you can see here, I caught them out. And that's going to, you know, they're losing lots. They've lost like six or seven musks already. 
And this is where the cav comes in. So the cav comes in, slows him down, sort of panics the enemy a little bit, but he has got the nags coming around, which is kind of crazy for me. But just make sure that your micro is relatively, like, decent. Like, don't engage. You want to switch here. You want to get your raiders onto the cav. Raiders onto cav. And, and they're going to do quite a lot of damage there to the naggies because I've got a lot of them. And you can see that I'm just focusing down. I mean, he's using the musketeers to focus down the uh, the cav, which is good. I am going to lose the majority of my raiders. Only six raiders left. However, look how much we've still got left. We've got 28 units left. And, yeah, the skirms are going to deal with all of them. And, and that's it. A complete cleanup. There you go. Got another shipment. And I'm going to go for the air, for the Yuan Dandy, which is the uh, outlaw one. And look at that. Look at that difference in score. 4K difference. Um... Oh yeah, he's he's starting to come back. That's what that is. Okay, I was wondering what that was. Yeah, so I'm just I'm still training. I'm, I'm not going age three. I'm just still making the Corsair marksman. I'm still pushing him, making sure to take down um, shrines. You can see here, he's actually left his daimyo out of position. So I'm going to try and cut him off here. I do quite a bad job here because I could have maybe snared him, but he's got he's still got a little bit of a force here. But you want to try and just see if you can take down the Daimyo because that obviously buffs the units. But you can see here, I've now got that increased range from the uh, Falanis, which is going to be really nice. More Falanis coming in, more Marksmen coming in. And it's just a skirm mass. Look at that, 38 troops coming in. And you can see here, actually, I mean, my veals are really bad. Don't look at that. They're doing terrible there. They're, they're all over the shop. Um... You can see now I've switched to Javelin Riders. Now, this is what I want to talk about, about composition. Now, you've got to always think about what your enemy's going to do, what they're going to do, how they're going to react. So what they're going to do is they're going to see all of your skirms and they're probably going to want to try and get naggies. So unless you have a lot of raiders to try and deal with the cav, I suggest starting to move away from so much heavy infantry and try going into the Fulani Javelin sort of composition, which is very well known in the later game in Age 3 and 4. The Javelin Rider with the Fulani Archer can be really good composition. So I suggest that you kind of maybe move towards that the later you get into the game. And there you go, guys. There you go. So, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this uh, sort of rundown of... I think this is a relatively Hauser beginner-friendly sort of opening or build order, whatever you want to call it. I think this is... Quite a nice opening for you guys, and it will help you. Of course, there may be further changes and nerfs and, uh, and patches to the civilization, but I think this is quite strong. You know, it, it gives you that economy. You get the upgrades in H2. You go for the, the dogs in H1. You then go for the snares for the food. You make sure you get place some mines. So you have that economy behind you. You have the option, of course, for going like for villagers if you need to. And there's just a ton of stuff. Real, real fun. Of course, there's a lot of things you can change. But I just wanted to show you this, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And of course, if you found this video entertaining, and of course, many others on my channel, please feel free to drop a like. And of course, you can catch me streaming on Twitch at Widgie one playing some more Hauser. I don't care if it's laming. It's a new sieve. It's interesting. And I definitely want to play more. See you later, guys.